Half the world's population live in rural areas, and it's here that the International Telecommunication Union is focusing its attention in its quest to connect the remotest corners of the Earth. It's in rural areas that some of the biggest challenges facing society exist. In healthcare and education, in fighting poverty and eradicating hunger, and combating climate change. But it's here too that we've seen massive strides in development through innovations like telemedicine, mobile banking and renewable energy. ITU is at the heart of this technological revolution, developing the standards for information and communication technologies, managing satellites and vital spectrum, mobilising resources and strengthening the emergency response in the aftermath of devastating natural disasters which often hit hardest in remote and isolated rural areas. ITU, transforming lives by ensuring that the benefits of ICTs reach the world's most vulnerable communities. Kenya, a new frontier in the digital revolution. All across the country, the majority of people live in rural areas, far beyond the reach of even the most modest type of modern technology. The gulf in facilities between research hospitals in central Nairobi and the handful of clinics in the rest of the country is vast. But according to ITU, it need not be unbridgeable. We know that we will never have enough uh, health practitioners to access all the people who need it. And therefore, having access through technology and e-health will enable tremendous opportunities in rural Kenya, telemedicine allows less experienced doctors to liaise with specialist consultants many hundreds of miles away. Making a real difference to what these clinics can offer doesn't require large amounts of money. Just one computer, one scanner and a digital camera can transform a hospital. They are very far from Nairobi and they don't know what, what type of fracture or what to do with their fracture. So after the X-ray, they scan it, they send it to us, we consult, we give them an answer on what they should do. Either to fix it locally and how to fix it or to refer. ITU is keen to extend the benefits of information and communication technologies to the remotest rural communities. Here, the biggest need is broadband, which would allow doctors to diagnose patients hundreds of miles away using video conferencing. The scheme can work more effectively if we have got in, uh, connectivity in terms of fiber optic cables within the region. And I think we have only one hospital in Kenya, Nairobi Hospital, which has got fiber optic connection, where you can see everything, even in theatre, in laboratory, as you watch the screen. ITU believes that the rollout of broadband networks will act as a catalyst in reaching the Millennium Development Goals and meet the basic needs of the world's most vulnerable communities. Along with UNESCO, ITU has launched the Broadband Commission for Digital Development, working to develop a blueprint for extending the benefits of broadband right across society, to deliver essential services such as e-health, e-education and e-commerce. Broadband is the place where voice, video and data are meeting each other. We are in a connected world where everyone is on the move and ITU is putting the Build on Broadband initiative so that health, education, all sectors can make good use of ICT as a tool to meet the Millennium Development Goals. The difference ICTs make can be seen in another part of rural Kenya. Under a clear blue sky, Jackson Wangangi records weather readings at the Katamani Meteorological Station. But until the recent arrival of a high-speed internet service, there wasn't much demand for his forecasts. Our work was just to take the readings, then send it to Nairobi through the post. In fact, you could find that uh, the time duration meant the data not useful when the analysis came back. It was out of date? Yeah, out of date, yeah. The largely pointless work would then be painstakingly filed. Two years ago, all of that changed when broadband arrived at Jackson's meteorological station. Now the morning's readings are fed straight into a live system and then modelled into a forecast which is available instantly on the internet and texted to anyone with a mobile phone. Those who are connected to the internet 
we, we forward the copies of the this forecast. For those who, who, who we text the messages to, we normally state this is the amount expected. Oh. I have a text message that is going to rain by two days to come. You see, wow. I have, I have text messages sent to farmer Titus Kitabu meant the difference during last season's drought between getting a modest crop and getting nothing at all. Yes, we have to hurry up. OK. Thank you. Yeah. His hillside farm outside the small town of Machikos in central Kenya was the only one to beat the dry spell that shriveled his neighbour's crops. Jackson's texts let Titus know when the rain would come, allowing him to plant on time. He tells me the rain is going to start by two weeks' time, the exact date. He gives me the exact date, and then uh, from there I have a good time to prepare my farm. It makes a very big difference. Using the accurate forecast, planting at the right time helped Titus harvest 70 bags of maize instead of 15, making him the envy of his neighbours. When I started getting the information, uh, my yield went up. And uh, then uh, my yield doubled three, two times or three times from what I was getting before. While farming in the developing world has become more and more sophisticated through developments in chemicals, crop management and machinery, it's the mobile phone that's at the forefront in bringing the latest developments to the poorest rural communities. Mobile usage is giving tremendous opportunities to people in the developing world, uh, bringing them closer to information, giving them the opportunity to create their own information and access and share information. But the arrival of information and communication technologies has also helped weathermen confirm a more worrying phenomenon, climate change. Researchers here say it now rains during the dry season, and when it's supposed to rain, it doesn't come. ITU has a critical role in combating climate change, in raising awareness and promoting the development of more environmentally friendly devices, applications and networks. The ICT sector is playing a key role in ensuring that uh, we stop the effects of climate change, that we monitor it and we save lives at the, when there are climate catastrophes as well. Striving to limit their carbon footprint, Indian mobile telecommunications company VNL is connecting remote rural villages using solar power. We redesigned the entire GSM system specifically for rural areas. So a VNL base station consumes less than 50 watt, less than a normal electricity bulb, which can operate on two small solar panels and uh, they are connected to a battery also. So for one day sunshine and for three days no sunshine, the system works perfectly all right. For the first time, these rural communities will have network coverage. Unlike traditional GSM base stations, the village site needs no air conditioning or diesel fuel. I never believed this could be possible. I feel like I'm human now, not cut off from the world. Bringing the benefits of ICTs to rural areas in the developing world is a priority for ITU. ICTs empower people to meet their own aspirations by providing access to information and knowledge. What ITU is doing, that is the single most important thing for the global community today because they are the ones who are pushing for this connecting the unconnected. As ICTs increasingly dictate lifestyles and behaviour patterns and power the growth of trade and commerce, rural communities around the world must have access to the opportunities offered by information and communication technologies. ITU is committed to global action to connect rural communities to ICTs.